Hey, what's going on, everybody? So this is the third and final video in the series that looks at how the Takashi 69 trial is going to influence the R. Kelly trial. So if you're watching this video first, you're making a mistake. You need to go back and watch the other two videos because it's going to explain everything that I'm going to say now, right? Or it's going to give you some background information on what I'm about to say now. Now, if you've been following the Takashi 69 trial, you know that he basically got a plea deal. He only ends up doing like five years, while everyone else in the organization got an insane amount of time. So it's obvious that Takashi 69 basically creates a precedent. It creates a precedent where you're linking a musician with criminal activity. Now, I think in this case, or in Takashi 69 case, there was obviously some criminal activity alleged to have been going on. For example, you know, the shootings in the mall, the selling of drugs, so on and so forth. But in the R. Kelly case, they're actually going to use sexual based crimes as a reason to bring forth this RICO statute. So in the RICO statute, that has to be an actual crime. Now, if you go back and you look at the other two videos, we go over the definitions of the actual RICO statute, and you'll see that the Black's Law Dictionary of RICO doesn't necessarily carry any sexual crimes in it. But when you look at the actual statute, you'll see that sexual crimes against children is actually covered, right? So this is how they're actually going to prosecute R. Kelly. And I think it's going to be one of those situations where many people are probably taking it as a joke, but you really can't because you've already seen them successfully prosecute the Takashi 69 Trey Bloods. You've seen them successfully uh, prosecute that group. Now, one of the things you should take note of in that group is that they had somebody to flip, Takashi 69. So they're going to, this is basically the template. This is the blueprint. So they're going to try to flip several people in the R. Kelly uh, crew, right? So you see that the indictment lists several people. And I guarantee you they're trying to basically give those people deals because they really want R. Kelly. R. Kelly is the guy that they want. So therefore, they're going to offer plea deals to everyone that's in his crew, and they are going to try to take some of the people that are in his crew and basically flip them. So you've seen already that, what's her name, Azriel, she's already flipped, but I believe that she's flipped for different reasons. It looks like their strategy of actually only allowing R. Kelly to see one of his girlfriends at a time is probably the re thing that kind of set her off. I'm not 100% sure. And there's currently a, a blog on my, on my page where people are coming up with different theories. And we're not going to cover any of that here because this is not the video for that. But I'll just say it's a combination. I'll just guess rather because I can't really say because I don't know. But based on what people are saying, it's a combination of jealousy and her wanting to be the main girl. So, but we're not, you know, later for that, we're not going to get into that. So the thing to pay attention to in the Takashi 69 is that they actually flip people. They, they flip Takashi 69, right? And then the other thing to pay attention to is that it's a successful prosecution of a music uh, a music performer or a musician, I'm sorry, it's a prosecution, a successful prosecution of a musician with the RICO statute. So they're, they're setting a precedent. They have a track record of actually winning with the RICO statute against musicians. So this is what's going to give them confidence in prosecuting R. Kelly. It's also going to give the general public and understanding of how it works and it's also going to give the general public it's it's going to set their minds not only to understand how the statute can work against musicians 
but it's also going to basically make them believe that you know uh everything that R. Kelly has done fits the Rico statute, right? So they're they're basically going to influence the jury and just say, hey, you know, this is a criminal organization. Me personally, I don't think it was a criminal organization. I think he was a musician and part of being a musician is that you're touring and you're having sex, right? At least part of being a, a male musician is that you're touring and, and you're having sex on the road. And as Greenberg points out, you have groupies and so on and so forth. And, you know, you have sex, you know? So I don't think it was a criminal organization. Now, part of being a musician and being on the road is that you yourself can't actually go out and coordinate all this stuff. So after you perform, you're probably going to be tired and worn out, and you're probably just going to chill in your hotel room and drink and smoke whatever, and then you're just going to let your team handle the logistics of actually getting the girls that you like to come to see you or picking out people who were probably in the crowd who liked you and they want to come and see you. And I think probably... Obviously, one of the mistakes probably made in this R. Kelly situation, and I'm just speculating. I don't know that he made those mistakes, but I'm just speculating. I would, if I was R. Kelly, I would have made every single woman, if I was to go out and perform, and there were women who were attracted to me and they liked my performance and they wanted to, to see me. I would have made they I would have made sure that they signed a non-disclosure before they came up to my room, because when you sign that non-disclosure or release of liability, not non-disclosure, but probably a non-disclosure and a release of uh, liability, meaning that hey, you're not going to come back and sue me uh, if you get a disease or if uh, you if we have rough sex and you don't like it, you know, to cover all the possibilities, I would have had you sign a release of liability. And I'm, I believe in some of these situations he did, right? So part of being on tour, part of going out and performing is that you're going to uh, attract women and women are going to want to be with you because you're a star. That's obvious. So they're going, and of course, again, you're not going to coordinate picking who comes up to your room because you're tired. You just perform. So you're going to let someone else do it, right? So the government is going to say that it's a criminal organization because they had a a system for choosing women that R. Kelly would probably sleep with and choosing women to probably come up to his room or come onto the tour bus or what have you. Now, the most important thing I want to communicate in this video is that the RICO statute is not going to be easy to beat. It's not. I think a lot of people are taking this RICO statute lightly. And I think a lot of people are in disbelief of this RICO's charge. And I think there's a risk. I don't think R. Kelly's lawyers are going to take it lightly, and I, I doubt that R. Kelly is going to take it lightly. But there, there could be, there could be a situation where some people are taking this like lightly, and they believe it's not going to stick. It will stick. It will stick. It can and will stick because all you have to do is look at Takashi Six Nine. It's stuck in this case, and. Initially, when I thought about the RICO statute, before I read the definitions, and again, if you haven't seen the definitions, you need to go back and you need to watch the first two videos. When I looked at the first couple of definitions, I thought it was total nonsense. But then you look at the statutory definition and you see how they tie everything together. And I think most people don't understand that this is a legitimate RICO charge. And you have to go back and look at the definitions, which I explained in the first two videos. This is a legitimate RICO charge, and you can't take it lightly. 
I don't know that Greenberg is going to take this lightly. I don't believe they'll take it lightly. I think that if I think they're lawyers and I think they're serious about their profession, so therefore they can't take it lightly. But if they do, if they do slip up and take this RICO charge lightly, I think it will seal the fate for R. Kelly. But again, I don't think they're going to take it lightly. I, I believe they're going to try to put up a strong defense. And I, I think they're going to try to basically show that R. Kelly was doing what any normal musician, any normal male mu musician would be doing, which is he's out performing. And because he's performing, because he's a star, he has groupies, women that want to sleep with him because he's a star. And the only thing he's done is basically coordinate uh, parties and after parties where, you know, he can meet his fans and, you know, and that's it. So let me know what you think. Do you think the RICO statute is going to stick? Do you think the RICO statute is serious? Oh, and by the way, one of the reasons that you see the Aaliyah bribery charge, which was recently refiled or recently filed, is because according to the RICO statute, they want to show that there is a pattern of using systematic bribes or systematic corruption to basically accomplish an illegal objective. So that's why you're seeing the Aaliyah charge pop up. Now, typically, one would say that that happened many, many, many years ago. So it's a statute of limitations issue. But in all actuality, me, me personally, I don't think they're actually trying to, they're, they're trying to actually uh, make the Aaliyah bribery charge stick. They're just filing it so that they can show a pattern of uh, illegal activity. And you need to go back and look at the definition that I provided in the first video. I'm sorry, the second video. And you'll understand why they're bringing up the Aaliyah bribery charge. Even though it's beyond the statute of limitations, they're trying to establish a pattern. So let me know what you think. Do you think the RICO statute is serious? Do you think they have a chance to actually win with the RICO statute? I want to hear what you, I want to hear what you think. Let me know. Leave your questions and comments below.